Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Tuesday, April 7th, and I'm going to do it on Slash GS, which is the S&P 500 and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And I'm going to start here on Slash GS, and every single evening I like to start on the four-hour chart, or what I call the bird's eye view. And as far as a day trader goes, the bird, the four-hour chart is the most important chart to understand is what is our bias on this four-hour chart? Are we overbought, oversold, or at equilibrium? And I want to really just recap because it's important to understand where we've been and that can help us on where we could be likely going. So all-time high, right? And then we formed lower lows, lower highs, the coronavirus sell-off. That's what you want to call it. Lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, formed the bottom here in 2200, Okay. Obviously, a lot of everybody saw a ton of value here, and so did I. I actually saw value at 2400 That's where I entered most of my positions, and so I'm looking good so far, my long-term money. And so, looking good. But uh, we went, dipped into 2200 Everyone saw value there. We then have, as you can see, we've turned a bullish channel. Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and then today we formed a new higher high. So you can clearly see how this market was bearish and now it's bullish. So another thing to point out that I want to talk about is I've had 2700 here on your charts. And the reason it's on there is because it's the largest price magnet I have ever seen ever on any market ever. And so if you see something as strong as 2700 on a market, I'd love to see it because I've never seen anything like it. And most of that was coming from about 18 months to two years ago, 2700 in absolutely insane. And I've been telling you that we'll likely see 2700 soon, and it looks like we will. The thing is, though, is what we're coming into, it's going to be super interesting because, and maybe a little bit difficult to predict because, yes, we are coming up into 2700, the largest price magnet ever, but looking at the content, we are getting overbought, right? We're severely overbought, definitely on the four hour chart. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can get, you know, 45 more points tomorrow uh, or if we're going to see a sell-off. And I say sell-off, but at least a fade back down kind of all the market does is cycle, right? So it's clearly cycled up. What's the next logical progression? And sometimes the market doesn't do what's logical, but what is logical? It's to cycle back down, obviously 2,600 and then 2,500 sitting down there. So there's going to be opportunities for um, if the bears start running, we got perfect targets and we also can be looking for some potential buy, quick buy triggers as well. So when we move here to the 15 day, 15 minute plot chart, no more indicators. And what I'm doing here is I'm just looking for structure. I'm looking for the best place to buy, the best place to sell. I'm looking for support, resistance, supply and demand zones. And what I always do is I start exactly where price is and then I start planning and visualizing. What am I going to do or not do at every single level if the market continues to gun higher? And then what am I going to do or not do at every single level if we see this market uh, kind of fade back down uh, into this structure down here? So let's talk about if we go higher. So our first context level is going to be the BTG plus 0.5. Now, I think if we do go higher tomorrow, it's going to be awkward. Awkward because of the 2,700. You got plus 0.5, and then, you know, 18 more points. You got 2,700, the largest price magnet ever. And then 18 more points, you got the plus one. So it's going to be kind of tricky. You know, there could be an upper. And so I got to really, really be careful what I say because this is going to be tricky in terms of and you're saying it's the largest price magnet ever, why don't I just buy? It's tough because we're so overbought. So it's like, crap, what, I mean, we're in a such a massive confliction. We got overbought, we got 2,700. It's going to get awkward up there. Me personally, I'm not gonna try and buy up here just because we're too overbought. Rather, I would like to see if I can't find some sell triggers either around 2,700 or plus one. 100%, I gotta wait for change control and see if I can't just scalp a little bit of weakness up there, okay? Now to the downside. Downside's a little bit more clean, cleaner, clear cut. The lines are a lot cleaner, the structure's cleaner. Our first target, these bears wanna start fading. What you would do is you'd wait for set, even possibly right there, as you're lying in the sand, and then you get through, hold pullback, touch brackets, micro futures, you got a first TP at Tuesday, and then of course you got the neg negative 0.5, okay? I'm not looking for buy triggers at the negative 0.5, not in the middle of value area. You've learned that in the foundations course. 
Rather, if I were to look for buy triggers at a minimum, I'd want to be pulling back into the negative one, 2550, and then obviously the massive, massive demand pocket is right here. Now, I don't know if we'll make it all the way down there. That's a long freaking ways, uh, but that is where most of the demand is. So I'm just pinpointing it out. This level here and all these POCs may not be relevant for tomorrow, but it definitely may become relevant in the next few days. So I'm definitely going to be leaving these POCs, that cluster, on because this could be used. If these bears want to start cycling, we're going to be able to use 2,500 in this massive POC cluster as targets and or support. NQ is pretty much the exact same, except, I mean, to the upside, there's not a, you know, an equivalent 2,700. Um, you really, there really is no two week structure on these deviations. And so if you do anything on there, wait for change control and just scalp some sell triggers. If you, if you see good change control, but to the downside, it's a little different. One thing about this chart, that's actually a positive different is that we have a value area. So, uh, we have an opportunity for value area drift back. Basically what that concept is, we've been teaching it for years is that when the market closes this far away from value area. More times than not, nothing's 100%. It'll want to fade back, okay? And so I wouldn't sell just yet. I would wait for a line in the sand, either 8,000 or just a little bit above 8,000. You'd want to get through and then start holding pullbacks, okay? And you can keep a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. And then of course you can lock and trail for that target right there. We had a, an insane amount of volume originate right there from negative 0.5 and value area high. So when you get that much volume origination, price likes to get sucked back to these large, large, large volume spikes. And if it continues to dump, you can lock and trail into here. If I were to buy this chart tomorrow, at a minimum, I would want to be buying value area low 7,700. I don't know if we'll make it but that's where I'd want to be pulling back for buy triggers. YM is actually almost literally identical to NQ. There's your value area drift back opportunity. And yes, this could absolutely hold as potential support. You just got to understand that if you're going to buy here, you better be in and out quick because you, obviously the bird's eye view is over, massively overbought here on YM. So if you buy here and it continues to dump, don't be crying because you're just trying to buy a four-hour candle sell trigger. It's cycling, right? Mm -hmm. Just move to a four-hour chart. You'll see what I mean. And then slash RTY is very similar. Actually, I'll take that back. I was going to say similar to ES, but RTY is a good thing because it actually has structure to the upside. You can see this structure right here. There's structure on the deviations, whereas the previous three don't have any structure to the upside. So plus 0.5, that has structure, and the plus one has structure as well. So that helps increase probability of success for some quick sell triggers. To the downside, you'll notice 1,100, big round number, is pretty much exactly negative one. So that's a decent level to look for change control buy triggers. And then you got negative one and a half and or negative two. So RTY actually has uh, the best structure out of all four in terms of to the upside and to the downside. It doesn't have a value area drift back opportunity though. So all four of them are kind of presenting different opportunities, which is a really good thing. And don't forget, we also have deviations on the three major Forex pairs. All three of them actually have really good structure going into tonight and tomorrow. We have deviations and value area on gold futures and crude oil futures. So there's nine charts to trade with. There's always action somewhere. This one here is empty for anything else that you want to trade. So make sure that you are taking pictures of all of your trades or better yet, if you really want to take this serious, record yourself trading, just like you've watched in the foundations course, you follow the four step trading process, post it in the trader tribe, share your thought process on your trades so that we can help you and give you feedback.